Hey folks, welcome back to Magical Diary. So, uh, looks like a few of you enjoyed the first video. That's good. And I've been thinking, um, how can I make this even more fun? Oh, wait, I know. Let's see, um... There we go. There we go. Yeah, I, there may be a little bit of a drinking game involved here. But, uh, hey. Let's see, um, what's, what's the rule that we should use? Um, for every blatant Harry Potter reference, I take a drink? How about that? So, let me... Let's see, I've checked... I don't have anything in my inventory. Uh, diary, yeah, already. Okay. So, I guess now I need to plan my schedule. Oh. Once again, we're all called to the gymnasium first thing Monday morning. Only this time, there are even more people here. Is this a meeting of the whole school? What for? I asked Virginia if she knew what this was about, but she just grinned and said she couldn't tell me. Oh, shit. Someone steps up to the podium, but it's not a teacher. <gasps> Who could it be? Good morning, everyone. My name is William Danson, and I am your incoming senior class president. <laughs> oh, senpai. But for the next week, half of you will be calling me Sir William, okay? Why? Welcome to freshman initiation. Oh, snap. A magical initiation ritual? Before we start, I am required to give you some safety information. Oh, goody. Nothing that happens this week should cause you physical harm. If you are ordered to do something dangerous or that you know is wrong, please go to a teacher immediately. Now, all you freshmen, please line up, one at a time, come up on stage, announce your name and where you come from, and receive one of these initiation handbooks. Okay. Students dutifully shuffle along, announcing themselves one by one. Some of them I've already met. Some names are new. Suki Sato, Jamal Mir, Pastel Rao, Luke and Logan Pfeiffer. Then it's my turn. After I state my name, William hands me a stapled together paper booklet. Inside are a bunch of rules and a list of all the members of the senior class, complete with black and white pictures and full names. They couldn't even spring for color printing. According to this, we're required to memorize the names of all the seniors, and throughout the week we have to address them as sir or lady, whatever. And there's more. We have to memorize a silly poem and recite it on command. We must never show our backs to a senior. We must never be taller than a senior. We must also always respond to requests with... Wait, William's at the podium again. Now, as well as serving and honoring the entire senior class, each one of you will become the property of one particular senior. Oh, please let me be his freshman. Your senior is your master, your best friend, your worst nightmare, and your only protection from the rest of us. Stand and wait, and we will choose. Oh, senpai, pick me, pick me! He steps away from the podium while we freshmen look at each other nervously. The seniors start to move around the room, poking and prodding and calling out orders. You're taller than me, freshman! Get on the ground! Don't turn away from me, freshman! I see your back! Ellen and I end up kneeling back to back and watching as the sharks circle. You. I look up to see Damien standing over me. Of course, he's an upperclassman. And this must be what he was saying would happen the next week. Stump Elda Stumpy Keen, I think you should be mine. Um, okay. Stand up. But then I might be taller. It's alright, you're with me. You don't have to worry about the rules if I'm with you. Only what I say matters. Oh shit. Here, take my hand. I'll help you up. Okie dokie. With Damien's help, I climb to my feet. Come on, I'll walk you to the door. You need to stay by me until you're out of sight of the other seniors. Then you can plan the rest of your week in peace. What happens for the rest of the week? More of the same, mostly. They'll boss you around when they see you and make you say embarrassing things. Then on Friday, everyone hugs and makes up. Don't let it distract you too much from your studies. You need to learn if you're going to keep up. I'd suggest studying blue magic this week. Have I? Yeah, I have already. Okay. Is that an order, sir? Just a suggestion. When I give you an order, you'll know. 
<laughs> you know, that's uh, not a drinkable offense, but you know what? <sighs> yeah. I will turn up to give you some instructions later in the week. I wouldn't be doing my job properly if I didn't give you at least a little bit of a hard time. He grins and brushes the back of his hand against my cheek. Good luck, Stumpelda. With a wave, he leaves me on my own. So what should I do this week? Let's see, I have not done any white or black. So let's do Jim. And you know what? I'm taking Friday off. How about that? Three-day weekend. Blue magic. Yay. I learned a new spell. Oh, shit. I missed it. I'm walking back to my room when I hear someone yelling up ahead. Blower, freshman. Yes, Lady Angela. Ellen bends her knees, but the elder girl follows suit. You're still too tall. Lower. Poor Ellen tries to make herself even smaller. If that senior notices me, she'll just start yelling at me, too. I can't make her stop, but I feel like I ought to do something. Hey, leave her alone. Is she yours? She's a horse, and this is our hall. You go on now. Whatever. Sorry about that, kids. People ought to be safe in dorms and classes so they can get their schoolwork done. I know I'm not your senior, but if you really need help dealing with the others, just let me know. Oh, I like her. Thanks. The older girl got nods and goes back to her room, and I come out of hiding. Are you okay? What? I'm fine. Everything's fine. Really? I follow Ellen into our room. Hey guys, how's initiation so far? I'm not sure what the point is. It's a bonding experience! Oh, joy. How else would you know that you've grown up and become a real witch? Well, I don't know, maybe that flying over the hedge thing was a clue? I don't know. By casting spells? Yes, thank you! Thank you, Stump Elda. High five! Uh. Whatever. So who'd you guys get for seniors? I got Balthazar Brendrick. He likes plants. He really likes plants. I think he's got moss growing on him. Like, um, did you check? Where? Um, your brother, William. Oh, that's great. He'll be good to you. What about you, Stumpelda? Damien Ramsey. Oh, no! Oh, shit. What do you mean, oh, no? He's evil. What? I met him last week. He didn't seem so bad. Look at him. He's a demon. Demons are real? There are actual evil demons, like in stories? Probably. There are a lot of creatures in the other world. What's the other world? Anywhere that's not Earth, Herp. Ask one of the professors. They can explain it better. But if he's only probably a demon, he's alright. Well, look, he's obviously not full human, right? He's not a wild seed like you. But when he first turned up at school back when William was a freshman, nobody had ever heard of him before. So if he's from a magical family, how come nobody, no, no, yeah, yeah, nobody knows him? All magical families know each other? Well, it's not like everybody knows everybody, but everyone knows somebody if you go back far enough. Most of the people in our year born magical I've met sometime, even if I don't know them that well. Or my dad knows their aunt, or knows someone who does. Like that winged girl, Pastel. Yeah, her dad was a sylph. Yeah. See, everyone knows about her and her mother, but nobody knew that guy. And he's blue! How is that possible? Also, William doesn't like him, so I don't like him. Well, okay, good reason there. It all sounds vaguely mysterious, but there's no proof that there's anything evil about Damien. Well, as long as he's nice to you, it's all right, right? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I'm hurrying across the campus first thing in the morning when I spot Damien leaning against a wall. Well, hello there, Stumpelda. Hi, sorry, I can't talk right now. What's the matter? Big Steve said I had to get him coffee right now. Well, he sort of growled it, really. Who the hell is Big Steve? Who do you belong to? Me or Big Steve? Um, well, 
you, but then I think you have time to talk. Don't worry, I won't bite. It's just that I've been thinking about you. As your senior, I'm supposed to give you commands so that you can demonstrate your obedience. I have to make you do things that you wouldn't want to do. Oh, God. But I don't want to do anything that would hurt or upset you in front of people. Oh, well, th thanks. So I thought of something else. Something you could do that no one else would have to know about. Our little secret. <sighs> like, I want you to write me a love letter. Okay. <laughs> what? An extremely romantic love letter. I want you to proclaim your undying passion in words with hearts and flowers and sealed with a kiss. Okay, you know, as um, degrading things go, that's not so bad. I mean, I can pull some romantic words out of my ass, alright? That's... I... I... See? You're embarrassed. That makes it a good challenge for your initiation. And a good souvenir for me, too. I always wanted someone to write me a love letter. Wait, you mean he hasn't? So you'll do it, right, freshman? something in my eye. I'll do it. Good girl. Hand it to me by midnight and your task is complete. <clears throat> and make sure it's juicy. You'd better hurry and get Steve's coffee now. Right. We head off on our separate ways. Ah, black magic class. I arrive in the classroom feeling slightly apprehensive. Black magic? Will there be zombies? Good morning! Has everyone got a smock or an apron? There are plenty at the back. Aprons? What are we going to do with those? For those of you who are new to our magical traditions, I should reassure you that black magic has nothing to do with death or evil. There's no such thing as evil magic. There's only magic. The bad and the good come from how you choose to use it. Black is the color of weight, solidity, and permanence. Black magic is the magic of enchantment in physical form. All wands and things like that are created with black magic. This does mean that cursed items are enchanted with black magic as well. That might be how people got the wrong idea. A pale girl with dark hair raises her hand. Oh goody, she's a snake. Yes, Raven? Oh, what a surprise. Since you're enchanting matter and bones are matter, you could use black magic to animate a skeleton, right? That's an interesting question. You could certainly enchant a skeleton to hold a spell or to react in some way. You could set a skull to chatter its jaw when anyone came near like an alarm. But to make something that could walk around and act on its own, you'd need to bind a spirit to it, and that calls for another kind of magic. Excuse me. We will get to com yeah. we will get to combine techniques techniques later in the year. Now, one of the easiest ways to infuse magic into a physical substance is to mix things together in liquids, potions, and that's what we'll be starting with. Always remember to wear a smock or an apron. Potion stains can ruin your uniform. Failed. What? I'm sitting at my desk, staring at a blank piece of paper and tapping my pencil absently. Um, could you stop that? It's a slightly annoying sound. Sorry. I flatten my hands on the desk's surface to try to keep from fidgeting and sigh. Are you doing homework? No, I'm trying to write a stupid love letter. A love letter? Not a real one. It's for initiation. I'm supposed to write a really romantic love letter. But I have no idea what to say. Oh. Maybe you should just quote Shakespeare. Sonnets are romantic. I don't think that counts as writing. Sorry. I was never very good at creative writing. Oh, I have an idea. You don't have to copy a famous poem exactly, but they can still give you suggestions. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. So compare him to something. Something unusual. 
what can I compare Damien to? His voice is like butter. I think of butter when I think of your voice because it's warm and soft and it goes all melty. That's sweet. Good start. If you were butter on a table with a bread basket, lots of people would want to take bits of you. But I want to keep all the butter for myself because it's delicious. Butter gets all over my fingers and makes them slippery. And when I lick them, I'm not sure how to finish that sentence. <laughs> oh, God. <sighs> I think you've said enough already. Are you sure? Well, I suppose you could finish it with, I'm thinking of you. Okay. I look at what I've written and frown. I don't think I have good love letter handwriting, though, and I don't have any cutesy stationery. I do. I could copy it over for you if you want. Really? Thanks! I hand her my scribble version, and she produces a small pad of pink paper decorated with flowers. It's supposed to be sealed with a kiss. Do you think he'll know if I don't? I don't know. There might be a spell for it. I guess I have to, then. Ellen copies my love letter, and I fold it up and carefully kiss the center of the folded paper. I do not want a paper cut on my lip. Now I can deliver this thing and forget about it. Hey, white magic. When I arrive at the classroom, I find Professor Potsdam staring, standing by the chalkboard. Good morning, Starshines. Well, oh, shit. There we go. You'll need to sit down before we can start, but take your time. Relax. Get comfortable. That's very important when working with this particular style of magic. Taking your inner word, I yawn and stretch before I settle into my seat. To some people, white is the absence of color, a blank canvas. In the non-magical world, white is a complete spectrum, all colors combined into one. In some ways, you could think of white magic as either of these things. White magic is the tool you use to access the spiritual realm. Ghosts, dreams, creatures from other planes, the thoughts of those around you. With white magic, you can experience and communicate with things that are normally hidden, like that smooch on the envelope there. There is one thing I need to warn you about. Some people have tried to use white magic to control minds and spirits, instead of asking for their aid. Don't do it. You will regret it. Now, shall we go on with the lesson? What sort of warning is that? Does she mean that it won't work, or that we'll be expelled, or arrested, or our brains will melt, or what? Maybe she'll tell us more later. Yay! Hey, Jim Day. Woohoo! How do you, how do I fail Jim? I hear someone outside. It sounds like someone's crying. Ellen? What's wrong? Was one of the seniors picking on you again? That letter. The love letter I helped you write. Somebody gave it to Professor Grabiter, and then he did this spell to find out who wrote it, so he blamed me, and they wouldn't listen. Now I have detention. I've never had detention in my life. <laughs> What? How would that letter get to the professor? I gave it to... Damien! You little shit. I reach out and give Ellen a quick hug. It'll be okay. I'm gonna find out what's going on. I stomp through the halls, driven by the fires of righteous fury. Even the seniors I pass on my way don't dare challenge me. Falcon Hall, home of the pretty boys. He must be around here somewhere. Damien! Is my favorite freshman looking for me? You little shit. I jab my finger into his chest. You gave my love letter to Professor Grabiner. He read it out in front of everyone, then he did a spell to see who wrote it. Now my roommate's got detention. Your roommate? She has better handwriting than me, so she rewrote it on pink paper to make it look cute. She did me a favor, and now she's being punished for it. I hope you're happy. That wasn't supposed to happen. Oh, Stumbelda, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have been bragging. That's what started this. Wait, what? I was telling some of the guys how I'd made my freshman write this letter for me. I was showing off. They thought it was funny. The very idea of a girl writing a love letter to someone like me. When I was at class yesterday, someone broke into my room and stole the letter. Oh. I thought they were only going to use it to tease me. I never imagined they would try to use it against you. 
and I had no idea your roommate was involved. Well, I'm not going to let them have the last laugh. Come on, Stump Elda. First, I'm going to apologize to your roommate in person. Then, I'll go to Professor Grabner. If someone gets detention for this, it should be me. He grabs my hand and pulls me along the corridor, slightly roughly. He looks a bit scary when he's mad. But I bet I did, too. I know just how he feels. It's so unfair when mean people hurt innocents for no reason. Yeah, you go, Stumpelder. When we reach Horse Hall, I detach myself from his grip. Let me go and fetch her. I don't think she'd react well if you suddenly barged into our room. He sighs. Of course. Not because you're a demon. Just because she's upset right now. You're right. I'm sorry. I'll wait. I enter the room. Ellen is sitting on the bed with an odd expression on her face. Ellen, Damien's here to apologize. Some bully stole his love letter to pick on him. He said he'll go to the professor and explain. That's all right. He doesn't have to. What? William already did. He came to check on me, and I told him the whole story, and he's class president, you know. He said he could fix it. Oh. He's very sweet. Um, so, will you come talk to Damien? He feels really horrible about what happened. And I yelled at him, too, so I feel kind of guilty. Okay. She goes outside to talk to Damien. So her senior already rode to her rescue. Well, I guess that's good. The important thing is that it gets sorted out. It's not until after I wake up on Friday morning that I realize something. Something very important which should have occurred to me before now. Virginia! Psst. Virginia, wake up! Wah! It's Friday the 13th! So? Um, are there any special rituals that we need to do or not to do to protect us from magical bad luck? Oh. No. Friday the 13th is good luck when you're a witch. Oh. So, it's a good omen that our initiation finishes today. Now let me finish sleeping. She pulls the covers over her head. Sleeping reduces stress. Boy, does it ever. After the day's activities, we're all called together into the gym again, just freshmen at first, standing together in a, in a confused herd, and whispering about the crazy tasks we've done this week. Then we hear the sounds of heavy bootsteps marching in union. Bow down! Look up! You're too tall! Don't turn your back to me! Lower! Lower! After a few minutes, we're all lying flat on our backs on the floor. And that's when William takes the stage. Welcome, freshmen. It's time for the final phase of your initiation. Karina will be passing out the blindfolds. Please put them on. <sighs> a long-haired girl from Snake Hall tiptoes around the room, delicately placing a strip of dark fabric in the hands of each freshman. Blindfolded. What are they planning to do with us? Well, everyone else is doing it. Okay, now I can't see and I have no idea what's going on. I hear people moving around, whispering one or two giggles. I wait. Eventually I feel a hand touching my shoulder. Sit up carefully. Now on your feet. I stand up with unseen hands under my elbow, steadying me. Then one of those hands pushes me. Hey! Round and round and round she goes. Where she stops, nobody knows. I feel myself spun around, passed from hand to hand. Stop! They hold me, swaying in place. For your own safety, do exactly what I tell you. Walk forward, slowly. That voice sounds familiar. Well, whatever. I'll play along. I follow the instructions of the voices and try to guess where I'm going. Through the buildings, out a door, across the grounds. Step up. Up. Careful now, don't hit your head. I feel a hand on top of my head guiding me into a van. Oh boy. <laughs> Sit down, I'll strap you in. <laughs> oh, God. 
I can hear other people being guided into the remaining seats. So, okay, we're going for a drive. To the mall? To a cave? To a hotel? To a secret underground temple? At last we arrive and are carefully ushered out of the car. Surprise! Oh? What? Initiation is over. Now it's time for the party. Groups of students lounge around by the lakeside, seniors and freshmen mingling freely. Long tables grown under watermelons, punch bowls, and shaving dishes. There's soda and barbecue and games, and presents from the seniors to their freshmen. You brought me a present? Actually, we were supposed to make them, but I've never been very good at that sort of thing. So, here. He hands me a small box. Inside, I find... Butter. And you don't have to share it with anyone. <sighs> God. I giggle. He smiles at me and seems so perfectly happy that I can't imagine anyone would ever think him an evil demon. Come on, let's go join the party. It's just getting started. All right. Everybody's here. This would be a good chance to get my roommates to meet Damien and see that he's not a bad guy. But if that backfired and I said something mean to him, it could spoil a party. What should I do? Um. Well, let's see. Well, she's already talked to Ellen. So, how about Virginia? Oh, you should meet my roommates. Are you sure? They're nice. You'll like them. I hope. I spot Virginia in the crowd, actually. I spot her senior, who's pretty hard to miss, and then Virginia beside him, and start to lead Damien in their direction. Virginia's a born witch, so she's really helpful teaching me, telling me and Ellen things about the school and traditions and stuff. Right through my begonias, but if you take some tea and rancid yak butter... Ew. Hello, Stabilda! She grabs at my hand. Isn't this a great party? Um... And then she notices Damien. Oh, you're senior. Virginia, this is Damien. Damien, my roommate, Virginia. William's sister. That's right. Um, and I assume you guys already know each other. Balthazar. Damien. Good week. It's alright. Balthazar was just here telling me all about his begonias. Why don't you two talk about that while Stavelta and I go get some food? But... You know how much I love dessert. Oh, sure. I'll go with Virginia. That's true. Come on. She tugs me away from the guys and off towards the refreshment table. Phew, I thought I'd never get away. That wasn't very nice. I wanted you and Damien to make friends. If he keeps Balthazar occupied so I don't have to hear anything more about gardening today, I'll owe him a favor. I'll even give him cookies. Right on, Virginia. I suppose... Do you know what he gave me as a present? Mushroom spores! Well, you could use them to grow a snack? I hate mushrooms! Come on, there's food and games we can even go swimming. Let's have some fun! And so we spend the afternoon having a good time together. On Saturday morning, I wake up to find envelopes under the door again. Our allowances! And one extra my parents finally wrote to me! I open up the envelope, pretending to skim through it quickly, but it turns out there's not much to skim through. They send their love and hope I'm having fun at boarding school. That's it. No mention about what they've been doing. No questions about any friends I've made. Not even any questions about magic. How can they not ask about magic? Before I got here, I had no idea what was possible. There was only that brief moment of magic back when I was 13, before the officials came to turn off the power and gave me the choice. For three years, I've had to wait and wonder. And now I'm finally starting to discover this entire world of possibilities, and they don't even ask? Maybe they don't want to bother me in case I'm busy. Or they figure I'll tell them what I want to tell them. I still haven't written. I'm so bad. I will write them to get a letter. Tomorrow. Really. But for today, I have to decide whether or not to go out. Um... I'm gonna go to the mall. What should I do at the mall today? I'm going to the magic store. Oh, I still don't have enough for a wand. Damn. And eh, that shop. 
After breakfast, I sit down to figure out what to write to my parents. I could tell them about the strange professors here, but I don't want to sound like I'm complaining. There are lots of silly stories about the things that happen during initiation, but I'm not sure if you can really appreciate them if you weren't there. They might think it sounds like bullying. I guess I should tell them about my bedroom and the food here, things like that, so they don't worry about me. They'll want to know that I get enough sleep and that I rem remember to brush my teeth. And my roommates, I should write about them. We've been so busy. We don't know each other all that well yet, but they're both good people. Poor Ellen's had a hard time of it this week with initiation. I'm sure she's glad that it's all over. As for magic, well, I've learned a few things, but I haven't really done proper magic yet. Just classroom exercises, so I'll wait a while before I tell them much about that. Mail doesn't go out on Sundays, so I fold my letter up and stick it in an envelope, but I don't seal it yet. I can get a stamp from the on-campus post office tomorrow. I think I'll go for a walk. I wander around the campus, wondering how long the leaves will stay green. This is a magical place, so it might be like this all year. I'd miss the fall colors, though. I wonder what witches and wizards do for Halloween. Dress up like normal people? Ah, uh, did you mean Arthur Weasley? <clears throat> As I'm thinking about that, my own personal Halloween decoration makes an appearance. Hi, Damien. He looks at me oddly. What are you up to? Want to do something together? Why? To be friendly? Because we're bored? Not that bored. Without a further word, he brushes past me and away. What just happened here? Virginia comes up behind me. I told you so. Told me what? That he's evil. I was just talking to my brother about him to get the scoop. He's a total womanizer. William says last year he left every sophomore in Butterfly Hall crying in the bathroom at some point. He gets girls' hopes up, then when they fall in love with him, he dumps them. I'm not dating him. The point is, he's a jerk. Forget you ever knew him. You'll be better off. There must be some misunderstanding. I know Virginia doesn't like Damien, but he was nice to me. Maybe he's just having a really bad day. Yeah, you just keep thinking that, honey. If he doesn't want to talk to me right now, there's no point in chasing after him. Come on, let's go to the gym and play. Okay. Okay. So, nothing in my diary or my inventory. Here's my diary. Okay, all this stuff snub. Done. Okay, what did I learn? I learned light. Oh, whoop de friggin' do. Okay. Next week. On Monday morning, I set off across the campus on my way to breakfast. Hey, wait up! Phew, I caught you. What's up? Sign-ups for clubs this, this week. I wanted to make sure you were on board for the sports team. Liz next door said no, but Anisha's in. Um, what sport are we doing exactly? Does it matter? We can vote on that later. First, I have to get enough people to agree and then find out what sort of team we can manage. Promise you'll join? Sure, I guess. Great, we have official sign-ups on Wednesday afternoon, so go to the gym then. As long as we're both doing it, Ellen will have to stop studying all the time and join in. She waves and jogs away. Well, so what am I going to do this week? Okay, well, it's gym on Wednesday. And I screwed up on black magic, so I'm going to do that again. Learn some more white magic. And how about red? And then I'm a study. And I'm going to take a break, and I will see you next time, folks. Bye-bye.